Most of the time, the quickest way to build a circuit is by using a breadboard like this. But once you have your circuit built, you need to be able to power it on the breadboard. So to do that, I usually use a breadboard power supply like this that plugs right into the rails of the breadboard. My name is Zach and I'm the Bite Size Engineer. In this video, I'm going to design and build my own breadboard power supply. But instead of using a barrel jack or a USB mini or micro connector, mine is going to have USB-C power delivery. I've been using these breadboard power supplies for years, and yes, they work great, but most of the time they use a DC barrel jack or a USB mini or micro connector. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't usually have a DC barrel jack sitting around ready to use to power a circuit. But on the other hand, I'm much more likely to have a USB-C power supply nearby. What I like about the ones that I already have is that they have a selectable power supply. I can choose between five volts from the USB connector or 3.3 volts from the onboard voltage regulator. And the cool thing about this design is that the two rails are independent. One could be set to five volts and the other could be set to 3.3. Since my design is going to be using USB-C power delivery, I can have voltages between five volts and 20 volts. To get the 3.3 volts, I'm still going to have to use a voltage regulator of some sort. Using USB-C to get those higher voltages is a little bit tricky because you have to use a power management IC to negotiate which voltage you're asking for. Looking closer at this design, I really like how it's notched out so that none of the tie points are covered up by the PCB. So in my design, I definitely want to copy that feature. But there's a really big drawback to this design and I want to fix it. The power supply is cantilevered over the edge of the breadboard. So in my experience, when I've gone to plug things in, that power supply sort of wiggles around and sometimes it can come loose. My plan to fix this problem is to 3D print a little base plate that provides more support for the PCB. First, I need to figure out which chip I'm going to use for the USB-C power delivery stuff. I did a quick search on DigiKey and I found the Infineon CYPD3177. This chip will handle all of the negotiation for USB-C power delivery. I was also excited to find that they have an eval board that will help me design this power supply. When you're designing something like this, it's always good to check to see if there's a reference design or even an eval board that you can glean information from. With this eval board in hand, it was easy for my team and I to design a PCB around it. We used a software called KeyCAD, and one of the things I like about KeyCAD is that you can view your PCB as a 3D model. Some of the parts that we used in this design, for example, the USB connector, didn't have an actual 3D model in the software. So I just went on the DigiKey website and I downloaded the 3D model and I inserted it into the footprint. We decided to make this board four layers instead of the usual two. This was to make it easier to route all of those different voltage buses, as well as to give us room for more copper zones to have higher currents. Once we were happy with the design, I ordered the PCBs. No matter how many times I've designed PCBs, it's always an exciting moment when I get to open up the box and see the thing in real life for the first time. When I ordered my PCB, I went ahead and I ordered a solder stencil for it as well. This is going to help me apply solder to all of the little pads rather than having to dab them on individually. To help me get everything aligned, I'm gonna grab a few extra PCBs from an old design and I'm going to create a little perimeter around my board. I have five of these PCBs to make and lining up the stencil takes a lot of work. And rather than having to align it five times, this makes that process repeatable. With this jig, I can insert a blank board and apply the solder paste, remove it, and stick in the next one and have it exactly line up every time. There is something therapeutic about assembling a PCB. I love getting out a box of parts, sitting down at the microscope with my headphones in, and just getting to work. Am I the only one who likes doing this? Now that all the parts are placed, it's time to reflow the board. Last year, I built a solder reflow oven using a toaster oven, but this time I wanted to try a different tool. I picked up the MHP30 from DigiKey. I used the solder paste reflow data sheet to set the three temperatures, and then used the onboard timer to let me know when it was time to change to the next preset. This mini hot plate makes this task super easy, and I think the results are great. Watching solder paste change from solid to liquid is another thing I never get tired of. It's so satisfying. I designed and 3D printed a little enclosure that took iteration after iteration after iteration, but I finally got something that I think I'm happy with. I'm lucky enough to have a printer that does multicolor, so I utilize that on this enclosure. And now I'm ready to install the PCB inside the enclosure. 
The last piece is the voltage dial. Using the dial, I can select what voltage I want on the output rails. If you're familiar with breadboards, you'll know that they aren't symmetrical, so this can only go on one side of the breadboard and not the other. And to make that easier to identify, I've printed the plus and minus voltage rails onto the enclosure itself. I've plugged in a USB-C cable that is using a power delivery adapter, and you can see that I've got five volts on the rails here. So if I change the selection to nine volts, you can see that it adjusts to nine, and the same goes with 12, 15, and 20 volts. Then if I want 3.3 volts, all I have to do is change the selection resistor here, and I get 3.3 volts on the output. Both of these rails work independently, so I can have either VUSB on the rail or I can have 3.3 volts. And as you can see, I've solved the problem that I was having before of the power supply coming out. This thing is really solid and it doesn't wiggle out. Now let's talk about the things I don't like about my design. I can make this design much thinner and more stable by using through hole headers instead of surface mount. The next thing I don't really like is using that selection jumper. I think I could have achieved the same thing by using a switch instead of a jumper. But you always have to have a version one of any product design and I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. I'm excited to start using it in prototyping circuits. I have a lot of ideas on how I can improve this. I wanna add a microcontroller on here, possibly a display and some LEDs to make this even more functional. Is there a feature that I'm totally overlooking that you would like to have on a breadboard power supply? If so, let me know in the comments. My name is Zach and I'm the Bite Size Engineer and I look forward to seeing you next time.